Greetings, this is August 13th and there was a lot of smoke fanning over most parts of southern British Columbia today. This is a screen looking at yesterday's Sentinel-3 image. We can see those smoke trails coming down from the north, uh, fanning out at the bottom. This is a Modus Terra image for today. Down at the lower right of the screen, we can see fires in Washington State pushing smoke upwards, and then there's this band that rolls out to the ocean, over to the island, and it goes right over across the Fraser Valley, Vancouver, and that's why it was so smoky there today. Up at the top of the screen, we can see the smoke trails from those fires have a tendency to be blowing eastward, whereas in the southern portion of the province, a lot of that smoke appears to be coming from the east and southeast and pushing out to the ocean. So there was a mix of wind patterns, and we'll take a look on windy. It really depended on where you are and what the elevation was, what your surrounding terrain might be. This flag is showing six kilometers an hour from the south near the Logan Lake area. But as those winds got to the Fraser, they fanned out and moved from the east at seven kilometers an hour. Near the White Rock Lake fire zone, winds were coming from the west at eight kilometers an hour. And on the Monashies, west of Nacusp, uh, we're looking at nine kilometers an hour coming from the west. What that looks like on infrared is that many of those eastern fire flanks got pushed back and some of the southern fire flanks got pushed north. So if you were in Logan Lake, the winds were favorable, but if you were in Moose Valley, north of the Flat Lake fire zone, uh, the winds were probably going in the wrong direction. We're jumping in at the White Rock Lake fire zone. Here we're looking at the complex of the fire. We see Monty Lake to the north and uh, Okanagan Lake down at the bottom right. This is the infrared for yesterday and now today. There was a subtle shift in the infrared to the west, pushing back from those eastern flanks. Zooming in, we're looking at the southeastern flank. Uh, Kalini Beach is near the center bottom, and uh, west side is just to the right of center. This is the infrared from yesterday and now today. It does appear to dissipate a little bit, almost like it's pushed back on its heels a bit. And I should say that we're only looking at one set of infrared, so we don't have multiple systems overlapping each other. It gets too confusing to see the screen. Uh, I'm looking at the area just south of west side and clicking on a couple of those hot spots, seeing that those infrared are indicated as nominal, so they're not burning brightly, but they are there as heat detections. Moving north to the Paxton Valley area, this is the infrared detections from yesterday and now today. It does appear that those infrared have moved up the hillsides. There was a cluster on the valley floor on the right hand side of the screen. It appears to have dissipated and I'm not seeing any movement really eastward. We're zooming out. Monty Lake is in the center of the screen and this is the infrared from yesterday and now today. I'm seeing some consolidation of these infrared clusters, not expansion, and there was slight movement westwards on the fire to the west of Monty Lake. We're now moving to the central portion of this fire zone. Uh, Falkland is at the top of the screen with Sweetsbridge just to the right of center at the top. The infrared from yesterday and now today. Overall, fewer infrared, but a slight push north on those clusters at the bottom of the screen. Let's zoom into the Bulo Lake area. This is August 6th, and uh, we're going to run through what's happened since. This is the 7th, the 8th, the 9th, the 10th, the 11th, the 12th, yesterday, a lot of activity, and now the 13th. For a more detailed uh, look at this area, I would highly recommend going to the Canadian Wildland Information Fire Information System and checking out the M3 hotspots uh, because you can get a more detailed description of where that fire occurred. They triangulate the infrared data. Now, 
these squares do not mean that fire is consuming that entire square. It just means that heat was detected somewhere within that square. And they may be off position and we may not be seeing all the infrared data due to smoke and haze in the area. We've zoomed out now from the entire White Rock Lake fire zone, looking at where all that smoke is going. Some is pushing to the west, some is pushing to the northeast, and there's some jetting down to the south. So it was a day of lots of wind variation and changing directions. We're traveling westward now. This is the Tremont Creek fire zone and it's made a southward approach towards Logan Lake. Uh, this is the infrared from yesterday and now today. We can see that smaller cluster that was on the west side of Tonkwa Lake Road has grown into a considerably larger fire zone. Infrared was also recorded on the east side of Tunkwa Lake to the south. There's uh, several infrared there and there's still one spot on the northwest side of Tunkwa Lake. And again, we may not be seeing all the data. This is the smoke in the area from earlier and we can see there's a lot of obscurity. So we want to check with multiple sources, get that ground report from BC Wildfire and the links are in the description below. There's been some concern over the fire's approach towards Kamloops if uh, southwest winds increase. We can see that large forested block to the northeast of this fire zone. Now we are looking at yesterday's infrared, so let's roll into today. And this gives us a perspective on what's happening on that eastern fire flank. So with southwest winds, we may see similar behavior that happened around Wallachian, where it got right to the edge of those forested blocks. So looking forward, my concerns would be with Monroe and Cherry Creek before Kamloops. However, the wind is a variable. Here we are looking at the behavior yesterday. Those northwest winds were blowing this fire zone down towards Logan Lake, but if we look across that valley of uh, Highway 8 at uh, the Lytton Fire, those winds were flowing more to the southwest. And today we have shifting winds. Uh, they're starting to push up from the south and the west and that caused a lot of uh, haze in the area and pushing that smoke that had cleared to the south back into those fire zones. And while we're looking at the Lytton Fire, we can see the Coquihalla Fire down near Brookmere at the bottom right of the screen. The fire south of Nahatlach is at the bottom left, and we see that southeastern flank, uh, that large predominant cluster at the top of the screen. That is the southeast flank of the Lytton Fire. This was yesterday and now today. So there is some push to the south. Uh, definitely still heated, still active. The perimeter on the Coquihalla fire actually does appear to have expanded slightly. Now we've moved to the South Okanagan on the right hand portion of the screen, Manning Park East Gate on the left hand portion of the screen. This is yesterday and now today. Not a lot of change there, appears to be aging in place, some subtle movement in the infrared. This is a close up of the fire near Manning Park. East gate is towards the bottom of the screen yesterday and now today. Less infrared overall, but there was some buildup on that eastern flank. Uh, I'm not seeing any encroachment on the highway. This is the fire east of Oliver and Osuyas. We're looking at that eastward movement on the Okanagan Plateau yesterday and now today. The fire looks to be aging in place. There's still a lot of activity on that northern flank. Uh, I'm not seeing any movement eastward. However, there is still a lot of activity on this perimeter. We're now looking at the activity of southern BC. There is Lower Arrow Lake in the bottom of the screen and uh, Nacusp is about center. And uh, we see Mabel Lake and Sugar Lake in the upper left hand portion of the screen. This is yesterday and now today. No large expansion or movement on any of these fire zones, but part of that reason could be the smoke cover in the area. It's filling up the valleys a uh, little brisker on the upper elevations, but the smoke is sort of milling around, not a lot of wind. I'm watching those fires up on the Monashies uh, at the top of the screen, top left. The 
only real chance of them coming in is if there was very strong west winds. Uh, and I do believe that the vegetation in the Arrow Lakes uh, is a defensive uh, factor to prevent uh, some of these fires increasing. And uh, now we're looking at the North Shushwap. Uh, we can see Adams Lake uh, left of center at the top of the screen. Let's take away all that smoke and haze. This is what we're seeing on the ground or a facsimile of the ground. This is the infrared from today and that activity to the east of uh, Adams Lake in the Momich Lakes area has increased. The infrared around Shushwap Lake, uh, Crazy Creek and Hanakwa fires, that does appear slightly reduced. And the infrared clusters near the bottom of the screen, those are still active and to the east of Sycamus. We are just heading up to the Yellowhead. We're looking at Vavenby. That's in the center of the screen. The Raft River fires are to the north of that, and Clearwater is over on the left-hand side of the screen. When we roll into the satellite info, we see those fires to the south of Vavenby and Irvine, and those winds have been milling around, and it looks like they've made a decision to head eastward or northeastward. We're now moving a bit north to the Great Timber Plateau. This is the South Caribou. We see Flat Lake fire at the top of the screen. Uh, the pavilion fire is at uh, the lower left. The fire near Gang Ranch at the upper left. And the Sparks Lake fire is to the far right of the screen. This is the infrared from yesterday and now today. Uh, that was interesting. The pavilion fire moved to the west and northwest, whereas up at the top of the screen, the Flat Lake fire moved north and east. Likewise, on the fire near Bonaparte, on the right-hand side of the screen, those eastern flanks also filled up a little more. So it really depended on which side of the Fraser you were on, whether that wind was blowing to the west or to the east. We're zooming into the Sparks Lake fire. We can see Young Lake close to the top of the screen center. Uh, Bonaparte is over on the right hand side. This is the infrared from yesterday and now today. A definite push eastward on these fire flanks. Uh, a lot of activity now to the east of Young Lake. And looking at the smoke for today, it was definitely blowing to the northeast. But as that smoke left the area, it started to head north. And we'll take a look at that in just a few minutes. This is the Flat Lake Fire Zone. We are looking at the infrared from yesterday, and now we're rolling into today. The western flank moved north. The northern flank moved east. There's quite a bit of increased activity on that northern flank. Here we're looking at the smoke for today, and uh, that's pushing to the northeast, and with the potential for southwest winds, that could increase. We're moving a bit further east, and on the left-hand side of the screen, we can see the smoke from the Flat Lake Fire Zone. At the lower right, we can see the smoke from the Young Lake Fire. And they're both converging on the Sheridan Lake and Bridge Lake areas. If we zoom in, we can still see there's uh, three or four hot spots still southeast of Canham Lake near the top of the screen, but there's also one that's popped up in that fire zone south of Decca. These areas can smolder for quite a while and then pop back up when the conditions are right. We're just going to move a bit further south and take a look at uh, some of the smoke that occurred today in the area around Cache Creek. The Tremont Creek fire and Logan Lake are near the lower right-hand portion of the screen. At the upper left-hand portion of the screen, left-hand side, that is the Pavilion fire. And just watch that one as we roll from yesterday's infrared to now today. There was a fairly significant increase in the amount of infrared being displayed there. Now when we roll into the satellite imagery, there's that smoke trail. Uh, it's flowing right over Cache Creek, uh, down Highway 1 over Savannah Lake, and onwards to Kamloops. This is the satellite imagery from yesterday. We can see the wind has pushed the smoke to the south. Uh, those northwest winds came in. There's some milling around. 
and now we're rolling into today and that was such a dramatic increase in the infrared uh, the fire zone may actually be throwing spot fires east and southeast and if we zoom out there is the situation as it occurred today there were winds uh, moving in from the south pushing back that smoke that had come down from the north and there were also winds moving in from the west as we just saw on the pavilion fire and on the other side of Kamloops uh, at the White Rock Lake fire that had a subtle push from the east uh, building up more intensity on the western flanks if we look at the crystal ball into the future, uh, Windy is now showing from the south 7 kilometers an hour in the Kamloops area. Winds tonight are coming from the south, then tomorrow they're going to change a bit and come from the west with stronger gusts. Then on Sunday, there could be wind gusts approaching 60 kilometers an hour at uh, the peak in the afternoon. Then the winds uh, change and shift on Monday and start coming from the northwest again when a potential for clouds roll in. There is a slim possibility for precipitation on Sunday night. I'm putting up the bear of vigilance because uh, those winds on Sunday uh, could be quite strong from the southwest and the west. So if you are east and northeast of these fire zones, you want to be prepared and have a plan together. Know what the vegetation and the terrain are like between you and the fire zones, what your access routes are, and please get the ground report from BC Wildfire and find out uh, what they're reporting on that situation. So please be safe, everyone, and I do appreciate all your comments and your ground reports. Those are very helpful to determine if the data that we see is accurate. Uh, there's nothing better than the eyes on the ground. And um, today I actually reached a thousand subscribers and I mentioned to a few people that if uh, I hit a thousand today, I would show a picture of myself. So here it is. This is me at age four with a bear. Thank you very much for watching. Keep your nose to the breeze.